Good morning. I am Dr. Huang. Today, I'm going to teach you a systematic method to write Lewis structures. This method is very powerful for molecules or ions whose Lewis structure is difficult to write. Here is a list of them. The example I'm going to use to illustrate this method is N2O. N2O is also called laughing gas. Before you start to write your Lewis structure, your instructor should give you a scaling structure. This is the scaling structure of N2O. A scaling structure tells you the connections between different atoms. An individual line in the scaling structure may not represent a single bond. This is different than Lewis structure. The first step to write Lewis structures is to place the valence electrons next to each atom. We should know that each nitrogen atom should have five valence electrons, and each oxygen atom should have six valence electrons. We will start from the nitrogen atom on the left, but I want to let you know, if you want, you can start from any atom. The nitrogen atom on the left has one neighbor. So we will place one valence electron between the nitrogen atom and its neighbor. Then we will divide the four valence electrons into two groups or two pairs. When you divide your electrons into groups, each group can only have one or two electrons. You can place your electron pairs in almost any location next to the nitrogen atom. The only place you cannot put your electron pair is between the two nitrogen atoms. Now let's work on the central nitrogen atom. The central nitrogen atom has two neighbors. So we will need one valence electron between the central nitrogen atom and each neighbor. Then the three valence electrons left will be placed into two groups. One electron pair and one unpaired electron. Finally, we will work on the oxygen atom. The oxygen atom has one neighbor. So we will place one valence electron between the oxygen atom and its neighbor. Then the other five valence electrons will be placed into three groups, two electron pairs and one unpaired electron. I want to remind you, after this point, you cannot add additional electrons or take electrons away. But you are free to change the locations of the electrons. The second step to write Lewis structures is to change the locations of the valence electrons to make sure every atom will have an octet, which means every atom will have eight octet electrons. Let me briefly explain how to count the total number of octet electrons. For the nitrogen atom on the left, it has two pairs of non-shared electrons. We also call them lone pair electrons. It has one pair of shared electrons. When we count the total number of octet electrons, we should include both the lone pair electrons and the shared electrons. The nitrogen atom on the left has one, two, three, four, five, six octet electrons. The central nitrogen atom has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven octet electrons. The oxygen atom has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 octet electrons. As we can see here, none of them has octet. We have increased the number of octet electrons for each atom. There are two ways, and only two ways, to increase the number of octet electrons. The first way is to share. To share means each atom will contribute an electron to form a shared pair. After forming a shared pair, 
each atom will have one more octet electron. When we look at the nitrogen atom on the left, it has seven octet electrons. We still need to increase the number of octet electrons. If we want to form another pair of shared electrons, then the total number of octet electrons for the nitrogen atom on the left will be eight. This is what we wanted. But when we look at the central nitrogen atom, it will have nine octet electrons. As we know, nitrogen atom can only have up to eight octet electrons. So, to share will not work. We have to go backward. Then, we have to use the second method, to borrow. To borrow means one atom will borrow an electron from the nearest neighbor. By borrowing an electron, the nitrogen atom on the left will have negative one formal charge. The central nitrogen atom will have plus one formal charge. And then the total number of octet electrons will be eight for the nitrogen atom on the left. The central nitrogen atom will have seven octet electrons. The nitrogen atom on the left will be fine. Then look at the nitrogen atom in the center and the oxygen atom. Both of them have seven octet electrons. If we want to share a pair of electrons between them, then the number of octet electrons for each atom will become eight. Right now, every atom will have octet. This will be the first Lewis structure we get from this method. But we want to replace the shared pair with a stick, which indicate it's a bond. The third step to write the Lewis structures is to find all possible resonance structures. If a molecule or ion has two or more bonds, and at least one bond is a double bond or a triple bond, there might be resonance structures exist. The Lewis structure we got from the previous step has two double bonds. Therefore, there might be resonance structures exist. To find all possible resonance structures, we should keep the relative positions of all atoms not changed. We should also keep the number of bonding pairs and the number of lone pairs not changed. To find all possible resonance structures, we can change the locations of the bonding pairs and the locations of the lone pairs. First, let's take away the formal charges. There are two more ways to place the bonding pairs. One way is to make the NO bond a triple bond. The other way is to make the NN bond a triple bond. Now we have to change the locations of the lone pairs to make sure every atom has octet. At the end, we will calculate the formal charges of all atoms in the two resonance structures we just found. The formal charge is equal to the number of valence electrons minus the number of lone pair electrons minus half of the bonding electrons.
half of the bonding electrons equal to the number of bonds. For the oxygen atom, it has six valence electrons minus two lone pair electrons minus three bonds. So the formal charge is equal to plus one. For the central nitrogen atom, it has five valence electrons minus four bonds. It does not have any lone pair electrons. So the formal charge is plus one. For the nitrogen atom on the left, it has five valence electrons minus six lone pair electrons minus one bond equal to negative two. So the formal charge for the nitrogen atom on the left is negative two. The oxygen atom has six valence electrons minus six lone pair electrons minus one bond equal to negative one. So the formal charge for the oxygen atom is negative one. For the central nitrogen atom, it has five valence electrons minus four bonds. It does not have any unpaired electrons. So the formal charge for the central nitrogen atom is plus one. Finally, the nitrogen atom on the left has five valence electrons minus two lone pair electrons minus three bonds equal to zero. According to the rules of formal charges, the atom of a good Lewis structure can only have zero plus one or negative one formal charges. Any other formal charges will make it a bad Lewis structure. Therefore, for N2O, we only have two good resonance structures. This is the final Lewis structure for N2O. It includes two resonance structures with a double arrow points to each other. It also labels all non-zero formal charges.